Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Data Avenue. In this video, I'm going to talk about V model in software engineering. Earlier I published about uh, STLC as a continuation I published about uh, waterfall and in this video we are going to see about what is V model, how it differs from waterfall model and why it is called V model and how the entire cycle looks like and pros and cons. So before getting into the definition of V model let's understand what is waterfall. So we all know the waterfall that's a project management methodology in which each stage is completely dependent on completion of the previous stage. So if you look at it here it starts from requirements, design, implementation, testing and the deployment. So the waterfall methodology is a very linear, clear and properly structured. Right. So if I want to complete the design, so there is a dependency on the requirements. Once I complete the design, I have to get it reviewed, any changes, we have to modify it, get it approved and then move on to the next stage. So now let's see what is V model. This is an extension of the waterfall model. In the waterfall model, it's a linear way starting from requirement each stage step by step it shows. Here, instead of moving down in a linear way, the process steps are bent upwards after the coding phase. So that would form a typical V-shape. That's why it's called V-model. It's also known as verification and validation model. So in the next slide, I'll explain you what is verification, what is validation, what is the difference between this. So if you look at the entire V-model architecture, it has the combination of developer and testing lifecycle. So that means the V model demonstrates the relationship between the each phase of the testing with each phase of the development. So before getting into the entire flow, how it looks in the V model, so we need to understand what is verification, what is validation, what is the difference between these two. So verification is, is the process of checking that a software achieves its goal without any bugs. So that is called verification. Validation is the process of checking whether the software product is up to the mark. This is the difference. So verification is different, validation is different. So how do, how do we do the verification, right? It's a static analysis method. So we have to do by reviewing it without executing the code. That is called verify it. For example, when I do the design, this is what I understood. So when I do the design, I verify the design whether it's as per the requirements or not. When it comes to the validation, it's a dynamic analysis method. So we know that each requirement should be split into a functional and non-functional. So we have to make sure when we develop something, so it has to cover functional and also the non-functional, right? So when I say dynamic analysis, how would difference from the static analysis? The static analysis is a, just a review method. When it comes to the dynamic analysis, this is after we execute the code. For an example, validate or test an application, whether it's as per the design, right? We have to execute something here. Then only we can able to validate it. So now let's look at the, the architecture, how it looks in the V model. 
So as mentioned in my first slide, it has both developer's life cycle and tester's life cycle. So the phases covered in this developer's life cycle is the verification phase. So this is what we review it. The phases covered in the tester's life cycle is the validation, right? And the dotted lines here, it shows the association between the each phase of the developer's life cycle and tester's life cycle. Let's have a look. So we'll have the business requirement and the specifications. And then from there, we'll get the system requirement specifications. Once we have the system requirements in place, that would be transformed into high level design that would cover the entire architecture of the system. Once we have this H H uh, high level design HLD in place, we would be creating the LLD that is called a low level design. It's kind of the pseudo code, the most transformed version from the requirement to the design in such a way that the developer or the development team can convert those into the coding. So the low level design would be kind of the pseudocode. So by looking at the document, the developer can code according to the syntax and then execute it, right? So once the development is completed, so we have to do the, the unit testing. So not as a whole as an application. So whatever you code as a function or particular class, kind of, right? So we have to do the testing, the small pieces, the units. Once the unit testing is completed, we have to integrate everything, combine them as a whole component. We have to do the testing. So once we have all the modules ready, we have to integrate them, right? That is called system integration testing. And once it's completed, then next stage is the acceptance testing, the user acceptance testing. So what is the difference between these different phases of testing? How testing team creates the test cases and how they execute? Right, that is what it's given in the dotted lines. And this this shows the association between the each phase of developer's life cycle and the tester's life cycle. So here the unit testing is mentioned here. So it's a part of our development. The developer has to do the unit testing. But here we have to understand how this unit test case plan, how do I write the unit test cases, right? So logically, once we complete the low level design, we have to come out, come up with the unit test plan and the unit test cases. Then we have to get into the code implementation. Then only it's easy for us to validate whether the coding is done according to the standard or according to the design. But in practically, what most of the developers would do is, once they complete the design, they code it and then write the test case. So that's the wrong thing. If we follow that, that may not give you the 100% coverage. That would give more defects in QA or uh, UAT. So once we complete the unit testing, so that would be there in the dev machine, development environment. Then moving to the SIT, the system integration testing or QA testing, how the testing team creates the test plan is for testing in the QA, they refer the design document. For SIT testing, they refer the system requirement specification documents. That is the base for creating the SIT test cases. And finally, once all the test cases are done, testing is completed, 
get a sign off then moving to the different system it's called acceptance testing here it's called UAT testing as well user acceptance testing what they do is according to the business requirement everything is correct or not validating it against the business requirement so usually the users who gave the requirements have to provide a green signal to go ahead and deploy it in the code right so you when either the users are doing a testing or they will coordinate with the testing team who completed the integration testing they ask according to questions according to the business requirements and the scenarios once we demonstrate it to them they will provide the acceptance email so that means like uh, we'll go ahead for the production deployment so let's look at it what are the advantages and disadvantages of v model it's purely similar to a waterfall model if you look at the advantages this is a highly disciplined model and phases are completed one at a time and it is a very good model it works well for a smaller projects where the requirements are very well understood there won't be any changes and it's a very simple and easy to use it and each phase has a specific deliverables or review process it has a very good documentation in place uh, proper auditing would be done if you look at the disadvantage it's not a good fit for the complex projects or other words it's not a good fit for long and ongoing projects and also not a great fit for where the requirements are changing it very frequently right because once the application get into the different testing phase it's very difficult to come back and change the functionality so we have to see the timeline and the impact and uh, we have to plan how to go to production with uh, the current system then we have to consider this changes in the next cycle or the different enhancements and finally some people was asking me uh, how do I contact you so you can contact me via LinkedIn or email and phone number with this bye for now thank you for your support and thanks for watching